Good morning, everybody, and welcome to D for Diving. Today, it's Monday, and I'm going to have a little bit of a moan about one of the subjects that really does get my goat and um, uh, winds me up with regards to uh, the diving industry. And today, specifically, I'm going to have a chat about professional dive training. Now, I'm aiming this video at those people that are providing professional dive training, that are using new professional divers, but also that are maybe contemplating doing professional dive training. Um, and I've got a few points I want to get across and, and talk about, so bear with me. So one of the things that I want to talk about um, is there seems to be a general feeling amongst dive professionals and people that I talk to that the quality and caliber of new dive professionals coming into the industry is a lot lower than it used to be and that it's harder to find those good quality uh, dive professionals that, that once were abundant in the industry. Why is that? Well, part of it is going to be obviously down to training agencies, and that's the one where most of the fingers of blame get, get pointed in terms of training agency standards are not good enough. Um, and I guess we can talk a little bit about training agency standards and, and what are the standards there for. But there's also a recognition that dive instructors and, and dive facilities don't even meet those standards uh, in some instances. And then, of course, we've got the age-old problem of young students, um, millennials as people like to call them, not applying themselves and not meeting those minimum standards or not taking it seriously. And with all of those added together, um, we then tend to see a, a lowering of quality and a lowering of capability. Now, why is it that that bothers me? Well, principally, we're in the service industry and we're trying to provide a service uh, to our clients, to, to tourists, um, and we want to be recognized and remunerated for the professionalism and the diligence and the hard work we put in. But of course, if we've got people who are, quite frankly, not interested in the industry, who've had the absolute bare minimum training and therefore can't provide the service standards, it erodes the value of the entire industry, which is why we've not been able to see any price inflation in diving in 20 or 30 years. Um, so it's, it's a self-perpetuating problem that if we continue to output poor quality dive pros, dive masters, dive instructors, who then engage with our clients, providing them with poor quality service or adequate quality, um, then it's difficult for us to say, and we deserve more money. And so it, bringing it then back, if we focus more on the training that we provide and we pro focus more on the capability of the dive professionals coming into the industry, maybe we're able to say we deserve more. That's one argument anyway. But let's have a look at the training agency specifically. The training agency's purpose is to make money. We all know that. We accept it. Hey, we all joke that Paddy has put another dollar in. Um, so how does a training agency make more money? Well, they make their courses and, and programs more accessible to people. Um, they make it uh, easier to get onto the rung of, of a professional diving, and they make the criteria for passing and, and completing the course safe, diligent, but not overly onerous. So it's in their best interest to have lots more people come through the program and complete their course as a dive master or as an instructor. What about for the dive shops and the dive instructors? Well, again, it's probably in our best interest to have quite a lot of volume because we only get paid for people doing courses uh, as opposed to for those people doing courses and go on and have a successful career. We don't get commission on what they earn. So is it in our best interests necessarily to uh, develop, spend time, uh, invest uh, time, energy and money into ongoing training and development? Or do we want to bang them out quickly, take the buck and say thanks very much? And if they don't have the right attitude or if they don't have the right capability, well, it's kind of somebody else's problem because I'm not going to recruit them. But again, doesn't that sell us short? Doesn't that make it difficult for us when we are wanting to recruit that whilst we see somebody with dive master or dive instructor on their CV, we actually don't know how good uh, an education they've got. So the question would then come back to, well, who should be responsible for rejuvenating the education that we're providing? Now, there's an element of, well, it's the dive agencies. They need to make the training better. But is the training the problem? If we consider 
that the training that PADI, SSI, NAWI, all the rest of the agencies put out there is the minimum standards. These are what people need to learn in order to be a PADI dive master, an SSI dive guide or dive master, where they're able to lead divers and assist on training. Do we necessarily need to change that? And I would argue, no, the training fits the purpose that's been uh, dictated by the training agencies. However, what we need to look at as dive professionals and, and dive shops is what is the additional training that we need to ensure dive professionals have, which means that they're employable and capable within a dive shop environment. So yes, it's great that they know how to plan a dive. Yes, it's great that they know how to provide a briefing and hitting all of the uh, steps that are in a, a PADI or an SSI uh, briefing slate. Yes, it's great that they know how to hold on to the back of a tank whilst we're delivering a DSD or tri-dive. But I want my dive master to know more than that. I want them to really understand customer service. I want them to understand uh, about how we link customer service to ongoing business, I, uh, how we do marketing, how we um, link the marketing to the service delivery at this end. I want them to understand and really appreciate about safety and reading tide charts and planning dive sites that we're going to go to. I want them to understand about responsibility and accountability. And none of these things can be taught in a course. These are things that come from a mentor-mentee relationship with the dive professionals. What are your thoughts? I'd be interested in your comments below on should it be the dive pros and the dive shops that are dictating what else is taught to our young dive professionals as they're coming into the industry. But what else can we do? Well, we need to deliver programs that meet or exceed standards as opposed to barely touch them. We need to, as I've said, teach about employability um, and accountability and uh, responsibility. And I also think we need to treat junior dive professionals as dive professionals, not as just somebody who's going to pay us a couple of thousand dollars uh, for, for the benefit of our wisdom and our programs. In this way, people who don't meet the standards, don't meet our standards, never mind the training agency standards, don't get the badge, don't get to become dive professionals. I don't know, I think it's, it should be harder to become a dive pro. But there's another big beef I have, and that one's related to offering free dive internships in, in resort destinations. I work on the premise that if I get given something for free, it's free, it doesn't cost anything, it has very little value. If I'm somebody who is looking for a free dive master program and to learn to dive, then I know that really what I'm looking for is a cheap holiday where I might be able to get some free accommodation and have some fun and chill and relax and let my hair down and uh, do all the things that a young 20-something might do. Am I necessarily going to take the opportunity in both hands and do I take it seriously? No, it didn't cost me anything. Similarly, if I'm a dive operator and I'm offering my training for free, I'm undervaluing my own time, my own experience, because I'm effectively saying that my experience isn't worth anything and that my time and my dedication isn't worth anything either. I, I get it that there's a cost-benefit analysis that's been done that says that the cost of a dive master crew pack versus the labor that I receive, the, the assistance I receive over an extended period of time. But I also know that the person that I'm providing the training to is not going to get the same level of diligence and is not going to get the same level of competence and professionalism as somebody who's taking it seriously and who is paying for it. There's also a much, much bigger issue that I find with the concept of free internships. And that's when I look locally and I say, why is it that a dive operation would be prepared to offer a free dive internship to an overseas student, to an American, a Canadian, a Brit uh, or, or, or a European? And I accept that it's because they're going to come with a already fairly well developed uh, service mentality and an ability to socialize and engage with people on an equal level. But as I look in the island that I'm on, that means that if I'm bringing somebody into my organization for an extended period as a free intern, I'm not providing an opportunity for somebody locally to develop. I'm not providing an opportunity locally for somebody to learn new skills. And therefore, am I really taking my social responsibility seriously or not? Um, 
I have a young lad working with me, Dean, who is going to say a few words in a moment on this subject. And I think it's really important to recognise that whilst Janet or Jim or whoever in in California wants to come down to the, to the Caribbean for six months and learn to be a dive master and we're going to give it to him free because we're going to get all this great benefit in six months time they're going to have had enough they're going, and they're going to go home and we start again whereas the opportunity we could provide to a young local lad could be with them for yet forever could really be a big difference to them um, and could make a massive impact on their life going forward and so i'm going to stop here now and i'm going to bring dean on and let him say a few words I'm Dean. I'm a DMT trainee from Kariku. What are the opportunities that exist here? Fishing, construction, maybe a work in a grocery store, gas station, perhaps. Why is that even a big opportunity for me? The education, the science, and the physics, and the physiology. Trust me, I had no clue. Diving itself. Diving is not just strapping a tank onto your back and going underwater. And communication. Oh my God, communication. It was a big thing for me. I had a real problem and a real issue on that. It's hard, you know. Service. I've never learned that the service you provide is directly linked to what you get paid. I provide a good service, basically I get paid more. So it's a big thing. I find that diving is a big opportunity for me. If I'm a dive pro, which simply means I could travel and work elsewhere, which means I'm not stuck on this little island. And it's even a career choice now. I have that choice to choose stay diving or not diving, which I'm going to stay diving. It really helped me build my confidence. Trust me, I would have not been here today if I was not if I didn't take that step forward into diving. So please, don't take that opportunity away from me. <laughs> so, an interesting thoughts from Dean, I, I see. And um, again, what are your thoughts on this whole concept of providing uh, additional dive training and uh, dive internships for local uh, people rather than uh, international uh, freebies? Um, what are your thoughts also on the concept of uh, free dive master internships? Uh, as I've said, my personal view, uh, you get what you pay for. Um, and if you paid nothing for it, don't expect a great deal. Um, and so that brings us to the end of my Monday moan. If you've liked this video, please make sure you hit the like uh, button and uh, leave any comments below um, as I'd be very interested to hear what your thoughts are. Uh, if you like the material that we're producing at D for Diving, then please hit the subscribe button. And if you hit on the bell icon, you'll also get notified of any new videos that we have. Um, thank you very much and stay diving. <laughs>